Hey guys, this is War Machine 395 here with uh, my unveiling for my final entry, or first entry, sorry, into the GE Gun Club Battlers Championship. Uh, first, I'm a little early. Um, the final day is um, March 31st, 2015, so it's the 2015 Gun Club Battlers Championship. Um, if you have any interest in entering, I'll make sure there's a link down in the description to the uh, thread. And you guys can go enter into that. It's kind of fun. Um, a lot of entries so far. Hopefully, I'm going to be competing. Anyway, um, what we have here is my Astria Dark Arms. Something I had planned for quite a long time. Alright, um, some of you might be familiar with my very first um, modification to a kit. Painted it like my very first kit that I painted was a uh, master grade camper, but this one is my very first modified kit. Painted it after that, so I added binders and extra swords everywhere. It's kind of a thing I, I really enjoyed doing, and it kind of got me into the, the whole modifications to a kit, anyway. So, this one is quite explicitly designed as an upgrade. Um, there were some glaring issues with that one, so I've made adjustments to this one that it, well, will improve it overall. Okay, so uh, this is of course tuned for space, specifically for space. Um, it'll be functional everywhere else, um, reduce performance, so Right, so clearly not designed with hydrodynamics in mind. So if it goes swimming, it, you can kind of expect it to move slower. And uh, of course, like the G particle weaponry, like the beam sabers and Vulcan guns, will not function in water. So that's something to be considered not to. Um, of course, the solid blades will still work, which is good. Um, on ground level, they can hover because of the avalanche systems got built up in here. Um, in air, it's capable of flight, still not very aerodynamic, so again, reduced performance unlike in space. Uh, Alright, so to cover weaponry real quick, um, we have it's bread and butter the uh, GE Particle Sword Three Kai's. Uh, again, same name basically with GN Particle Swords. Um, solid swords, there's two of them. Okay, uh, these guys are a direct equivalent to my Axia's swords. Um, basically, few improvements. Um, these no longer function as a pistol. The swords don't fold down. Um, you know how when you have a kid sitting on a shelf, joints weaken over time? Like this joint I found weakened because of the weight of the blade. It kind of just flops down. Even after you paint it, it still gets loose. So what I've done is glued the sword in solid. That way you can use both sides of the blade with no risk of it folding down. Also, because the pistol's not there, and the transformation mechanism not there. It overall reduces the weight of the blade. So, it functions better as a blade. It doesn't have any pistol in it. But, it, overall improvement to the weight and handling of the blade. Okay, cutting edges, of course, are also an improvement. Uh, new material involved. Alright, um uses the GE particles, uh, the flow of those, to generate a cutting edge. Uses a lot of heat to cut through the plastic of an opponent's machine. Alright, um, now, uh, the second variant of the sword that it will also be carrying is the light machine gun sword. Alright, and just as the name suggests, sorry, GE light machine machine gun sword. Alright, involves slight sliding mechanism, handle, 
Alright, so effectively these will function as a buster sword type affair. Alright, so uh, these are the only true ranged weapons on the kit. Because um, the machine gun. And it's based on. He's actually replaced two weapons on the old kit, the uh, submachine gun seen here, and the swords on the side. Okay, so, single blade sword, and a machine gun in one. That way, when he's using these for ranged fire, no need to throw them away to grab a sword. Right? Especially where there was no mounting point on the old kit for a machine gun. Alright, so basically reduce the old kit to a hit and run type of thing. And it can only do it once. So you had to kill it right away. Sorry, any target you made, you had to kill in the first go around because you'd have no ranged options after that to give yourself any sort of make them duck while you get close. This one, because these mount back on the kit on the back. You can use them over again. Yep, and at the same time they also function as a sword. Okay, and with the weight of the machine gun in behind them, you can use them for cleaving through heavier armor, though it makes them harder to wield. They're slower. Okay, uh, it's swing. Okay, from there, uh, internal weaponry, we have four beam sabers mounted in the forearm here and here and then in the toe kind of move this a little so you can see it here and here okay so they come out of the toe okay so even when disarmed of all four of its blades slash two machine guns um, it's still rather formidable at close range Okay, so, alright, so in terms of strengths, um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, this kit adds an avalanche system, so it has added shields mounted on the upper arm, lower legs, and added thrusters to match, okay, so it averages out as actually faster and more heavily armored than my original. So you have shields, 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 um, and boosters under each of them, plus boosters on the back of the legs, additional boosters, butt thrusters, yeah, I said butt thrusters, on the back. Okay, uh, shields that I've added to the side skirts, it doesn't have any side skirts before. Um, so basically that resulted in a less armored area by the side. Okay. Which, of course, at close range could be an issue. It's surprisingly easy to hit a swing in through the side under a person's guard. Okay, from there, there is GE particle composite armor throughout the kit. All right. Um, again, that comes down to the design of the kit as well. Uh, to let, it's a direct equivalent to GE composite armor, sorry, GE, GN, sorry, bleh, composite armor. Okay, so it gives it some high resistance to shells. Um, they're not going to bounce off, and of course it'll scrape the armor, but it won't completely blow off a leg with one shell. All right, um... Alright, from there I've actually done sort of an anti-beam coating, which I've kind of made equivalent to a gloss coat. Um, if you think about it, just um, in my recollection anyway, the first kit that I, sorry, not kit, um, machine design that I can think of that really had an anti-beam coating was the Yakushiki. It specifically mentioned that it has an anti-beam coating and that somebody goes, well, why isn't it on every mobile suit? And they say, well, it's really expensive. Anyway, um, the way it was presented, I always took it to mean that the gold paint job 
that was always specifically left really shiny was the anti-beam coating. And it sort of made sense that a glossy finish for a kit would be the best way to reflect a beam. Not reflect a beam, beam, sorry, but maybe refract a beam. Like a, uh, think like albedo effects with snow, right, where it reflects a lot of energy. Reflects or refracts. Um, anyway, uh, from there, we also have an enhanced musculature package. Okay, so the forearms and lower arms have seen a considerable amount of added bulk. All right, that amounts to better wielding for the swords. You can handle them faster. All right, where these are relatively heavy but still lighter than the originals, uh, means it can move them faster. Okay, so again, enhanced close range ability. Next, um, we have Transam. Of course, comes with the mold. Um, so basically, it gets enhanced performance for five minutes, three times what it usually gets. But as terms in terms of weaknesses, it also reduces the performance after that time limit's hit. So, about a third of the performance after that. Okay. And from there, um, now we're covering weaknesses, I suppose. Um, it has limited ability against long-range weapons. Alright, and I've mentioned it's reduced performance in certain environments. Um, water, specifically. The beam sabers, GN Vulcan guns, light machine guns, do not work in water. So, um, kind of comes down to that. Um, okay, so against a long-ranged fighter, like a beam sniper kind of thing, it will need to get close. Closer. They use the machine guns. They, they don't have super extended range. So, again, this comes down to it being a close to mid-range fighter. Uh, okay, so, that covers weaknesses. Um, now, like the original, it's uh, designed as a close combat variant, and the reason for that is I'm using... It's ideally designed to match what I, I as a person, have acquired as skills and real life. Um, so, I've been a fencer, a saberist, specifically for a little over 14 years now, so using swords is, kind of falls under my forte. Um, <laughs> got the fencing mask and uh, about four swords sitting upstairs too, actually. Uh, yeah, it's got the same number of swords as me. Wow. Okay, that, that was accidental, by the way. Anyway, um, Okay, so basically it's designed with the idea of using the skills I already have when I'm piloting it. So, so I'm hoping that that gives me a slight advantage. Anyway, um, let's see here. I think that about covers... I, I'm, I've mentioned the Exia and how I've intended to improve things from that. And... Um, just to finish things off, well, there will be a part two to this video in late March, okay, um, which will cover two secret weapon systems. Yeah, an optional hand-carried weapon and a, an internal weapon system that's already inside it. In fact, it's kind of obvious. <laughs> but, I'll give away nothing. Anyway, some pictures to follow in the video. Um, I think I've got music for this again, so enjoy. Um, and a link in the description to the completed showroom and galleries. Alright, so uh, thanks for watching, guys. See you at the next video.